Hi there. In this video, we're going to look at pagination. So the idea of pagination is that when we have a large data set, we want to return them in smaller chunks. So imagine that the books index action, imagine that we had thousands of books in the database. We wouldn't want to return them all at once because that could cause the web server to time out. Instead, we can return them in smaller subsets, let's say 100 books at a time. And with pagination, we can allow the user to um, select through the different um, portions of the book uh, results. So to get started, let's write a test to demonstrate how we'd want the pagination to work. Let's jump over to the books request spec. Uh, and what we want to do is add a new test. So let's say it returns a subset of the uh, of books based on pagination and we'll make a request just like we do up here only we'll specify the we'll specify a param and we'll say limit one now the first two expectations should be the same we want the response to have a success status code uh, oh and this one should be one uh, because we're limiting the results with pagination so that we only get one result back and same thing for this test sorry for this expectation we should only get one result back so let's run this test and we'll expect it to fail because we haven't added any logic for the uh, limit param yet. To get this working, we need to add an active record limit query to the books query that we're doing in the controller. So you can see right now we're returning all books, but we need to add the limit to that. And we're also going to be adding the offset active record query which is how, so the limit is how we choose the uh, size of the result set. And then the offset is how we page through them. So I can change this to uh, limit and I'll take the limit from the params and I can also add an offset onto here as well. And this should work fine because if we don't pass the param and we pass in nil, the offset or limit won't be applied. If we do pass the param, then obviously the query will, will be limited uh, and it will be offset. So if I rerun that test, we can see that it now passes, which is great. Let's also add a test for offset. So we'll jump back to the spec and we have one here for returns a subset of books based on pagination. And let's say um, it returns a subset of books based on limit and offset. And I'll change this to just be based on limit. Um, and we'll do the same request only now we'll have the offset so I'll also give it an offset of one and so remember that we have two uh, results in the database when there's no pagination applied so if I say limit one then I'll get the first one if I say limits one offset one, 
I'm going to be getting this one because we're, with the with the limit, we're splitting the results into two chunks. And then when I offset by one, we get the second one. So we have limit one, offset one, and all these ex expectations will be the same. Only this time we should get the second result. There we go. Let's try that. And there we go, that passes. So our limit and offset are both working. With these changes, users can optionally pass pagination params. But as I said at the start, the whole point of pagination is to stop uh, requests from returning thousands of results. So what we need to do is if pagination params are not specified, then we need some sort of fallback or default or a maximum is a better way to describe it. So that if these params aren't provided, then we'll return say 100 results maximum. So let's add a test to describe this behavior. We'll say it has a max limit of 100. And so we want to make a request with no, well, in fact, what we'll do is I'll make a request with a limit of 999, just so, just to prove that even if the user makes, tries to hard code a large limit, we still will only return a hundred books. To test this, we could create 999 books or even just 101 books and test that only 100 get returned. But that's quite an inefficient way to test because we, we're creating a load of database records, um, you know, just to test our pagination. So a better way would be that we actually make an assertion on this book um, record here to check what param it's getting. Because we can trust that if limit gets the right param, we can trust the limit method to do its thing. You know, that's built into Rails. So all we need to do is make sure that this value is getting in there correctly. So what we can say is expect book to receive limit um, with 100 and then we have to add call original on there and the reason we need this is um, what this does in our spec is basically mock the object and if we don't add call original then uh, this is going to fail because we're not specifying a a return value so essentially what this does is just says like carry on with the code execution as normal so again what what this line does is we're expecting that book receives limit which it always will and then we're saying we expect it to receive limit with the value of 100 now I should say that this test isn't really a uh, request spec we're now getting into more of a unit test where we're, we're testing the specifics of the controller so we'll carry on for now but at the end of the video we can uh, refactor this out and move it into a, a specific controller test so let's run this and we can see that it fails right now because we're expecting 100 but we're actually getting 99. So now we're at a point where we can implement the uh, max limit logic. If we jump to the books controller, we can add the limits method. So 
let's say we can, okay, so uh, Ruby has a max method. And what you can do is basically get the maximum of two numbers in an array or more numbers. So if I open up the console, this will return the larger of the numbers. So we can use that to figure out the what the max should be. And what we want to say is, sorry, this, this should be minimum. Um, and so in our case, if we have 100 here and the user passes in 99, then we're essentially always going to return the 100. So we can use this min method to cap the limit at 100. So now all we need to do is change this 99 to be the user input. So I'll say params fetch uh, limit and this will, this will get the limit. And then I can use, the reason I'm using fetch is because if there is not a limit, then instead of nil, we want to have a default. So the default will be 100. The reason I need that is because uh, if the user doesn't provide a limit and there's, there's a nil, and that returns an error. So with fetch, we know that if they don't provide a limit, we'll still get 100. And the last thing I want to do is, if you notice in this test, this 99 can come through as a string because it's been the way that params are deserialized. So just to check that we always have a integer, I'm going to call 2i on it. And then all we need to do is use the limit up here. So instead of passing in the raw params, we're going to be using this limit method. And I'll run the tests again, or just that specific test, and we can see that it's now passing. And let's also run the whole test suite, just to make sure we haven't got any failures. And there we go, they're all passing. We have this pending test. Uh, in fact, I'll actually delete that. Delete that, run the, run the tests again. There we go. Let's just do one thing to tidy up the limit method slightly. You can see that we're using the value 100 a couple of times here, and it's not obvious what that, what that is and why we have to apply 100 here twice. So I'm going to add this at the top with a, uh, a named constant. So we'll just say max pagination limit 100. Now at some point we could, as we build up more uh, controllers and this application becomes more complex, we can actually move this out into a kind of uh, pagination module where you include it into the controller and it basically adds in uh, pagination. And that would also move this logic out of the controller, which would be good. But for now we can uh, just leave it here. The last thing I said we do is move the uh, this more Unity style test out into a controller test. So I'm going to create a new directory under spec for uh, controllers and then a new file which should match the the name of the controller. So this would be books controller uh, spec. Now we have the the usual boilerplate so require uh, rails helper and then we have uh, describe 
uh, sorry, RSpec, RSpec describe. Uh, so this would match the controller path. So it's API v1, v1, and then books controller. And then we have the type here. So this would be type controller. And then we can copy over our uh, test here. So we say it has a max limit of 100. Let's just try, try to run that. So this fails because the way that controller tests um, call routes is different. We don't want to call the um, like the overall route. We're not doing a controller test here. We want to control. We want to test the specific um, controller action. So we're going to change this to get index and the same uh, the same params will be applied. So I think we said it was params uh, limit 999. There we go. We have a passing test and I'll rerun the whole test suite again. And everything's passing. And we now have our um, controller specific logic nicely tidied away in its own dedicated spec. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned a little bit about uh, building pagination into your APIs using Rails limit and offset and a little bit about um, controller specific specs. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.